Let's do this. Three, two, one. Yep, I actually just bought five Ari Alexa cinema cameras, but let's rewind to the beginning. So I've been browsing for a good deal on an Ari Alexa classic for a while now to make a review of on my channel. I think it is an awesome cinema camera. I've pretty much just been dreaming of getting my hands on one for at least the last few years. Then the other day, this happened. Okay, someone just listed a bundle of five broken Ari Alexa cinema cameras on eBay for $1,500. That's $300 each for five Ari Alexa cinema cameras. Like, Ari Alexa, some of the best legitimate cinema cameras in the world. A bundle of five of them, and they say they're broken. Um, it says some cameras power on, some do not, some are mostly complete, some are not. They're all missing a variety of screws and are otherwise incomplete in some way. So some of them power on, some of these could just be missing a few parts but be fully functioning. So many ideas are popping in my head right now of, you know, if I could piece together some of these and get one of them working, or I don't know, $300 each for five Ari Alexas. I'm gonna go ahead and send an offer over. It's 1500 bucks. I think I'm missing a thousand dollar offer over. I really should not be spending this money right now, but if I could get these for a thousand bucks, $200 each, I don't know. I have to get my hands on these. Still been waiting, still haven't gotten an offer back or a declined offer, anything like that. So I sent him a message. Um, I told him that I'm trying to make a YouTube video about trying to fix these and get one of them working. So I don't know if they're gonna respond or really care about that. Hopefully they do because I seriously need to get this, this is insane. I really hope I can get this. Look what I just got from their sales department about the Ari cameras. They emailed me. They went to my channel, found my email, just from that message that I sent them, and emailed me. I cannot believe that actually worked. I sent them a message, gave them my channel name, and just kind of said that, you know, I'm really interested in getting these uh, to make a YouTube video about trying to fix them. And they went to my channel, found my email, and emailed me. Hey there, wanted to reach out. Love the channel and love the idea of seeing if you can fix these. I would imagine there's at least one working camera in there, just spread over a few units. We could do 1250 shipped for all of them. Oh my. 1250? <laughs> Would that be 275 per camera? $275 for an Ari Alexa Classic. For five of them, 275 each. I gotta do it, I gotta do it. I'm probably gonna go in depth from this, so subscribe, maybe like this video. I'm doing it. 12.50 for five Alexas. Let's do this. All right, so it's the next morning. Um, I still haven't heard back over email. It's been 15 hours. There's more watches on the listing. I'm still really worried it's just gonna sell before I can get to it. So I'm gonna send a follow-up email. I kind of feel bad because it hasn't even been a full day yet, um, but I'm just gonna send it, see what happens. I gotta do everything I can to get my hands on these cameras, so. I'm just gonna go through with it, send a follow-up email, see what they say. This is uh, really stressful. I'm really trying to get this before it sells, but I'm really thinking about how much money this is to spend on broken cameras. <laughs> Okay, they just emailed. They said they can get him shipped out today. I still haven't paid for him, so I, I just can't get my hopes up yet. But they said they could get him shipped out today. I just emailed back again, so I gotta wait for a response. As soon as I pay them, I know they're mine. So 
we're getting there. We're so close. We're so close. We are basically at the finish line here. Now I need to fit about a month's worth of research into RE cameras in like an hour. So <laughs> that's, that's the goal now. I know they don't have lens mounts. I need to figure out some sort of lens mount situation. Kind of have a sticky note here that I wrote down with everything. So I need to figure out some sort of lens mount. I need to figure out some sort of power input because the V mount plates on the back of the cameras are missing. So I need some sort of power input to even be able to see if the power on. I need an SDI to HDMI adapter because I don't have an SDI monitor. I need to figure out storage. Um, they take S by S cards, so I need to get S by S cards and an S by S card reader. All this stuff's ridiculously expensive, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. The cheapest possible way to get all this because if I were to buy all this, you know, RE branded, like whatever the standard equipment is, I'd be paying probably three times as much as I paid for five cameras just for these little accessories to get them going. So. I gotta figure this out. I have a long day of research ahead of me. But I'll let you know if the money goes through, I'll let you know if I officially get them, and uh, we'll go from there. But here we go, this is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for for so long now. Five Ari Alexas just arrived. Let's see what's in this box. All right. Okay, first of all, we have a uh, little cable here. It is Ari branded. Lots and lots of bubble wrap. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's another one. Let's get this one out first, I guess. There we go, there is camera number one. It feels like this circuit board is loose, so I'm gonna keep it kind of on its side there. Let me just try to hold that in place and look at the other side. Okay, the other side doesn't have any exposed components, so I'm gonna set it down on its right side. Okay, this one looks fairly complete. That looks really good so far. There was quite a few pictures, but I really don't know anything about these, honestly. I kind of saw somewhat of an idea of the condition of them, but I really don't know anything about these, so. There's that one. This one looks very complete, I'd say. Um, it has a screen, it's missing a few buttons. Um, missing some inputs or outputs as well, which is not that good. Yeah, it's missing the power input, which isn't good either. But we'll, we'll take a look at, oh, and that fan just fell out. We'll take a look at these more in depth once I get them out. Let's just get these things out. These are very heavy. There is a fan cover that is very good because it looked like all these were missing this. Um, so I'm glad to have at least one that I can use. Here is another piece. Okay, bunch of exposed components. Here we go. Layer one is complete and it's separated. That's really good. It looks like it's packed very well. There is this actually. Ooh, that's not good. That looks to be some sort of component on a circuit board. That's a, actually a very bad sign. I'm gonna keep that, but I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to get any use out of it. This out, no more components in there. Here we go, layer two. Okay. Oh, these are looking good. Lots of, uh, looks like fairly complete cameras in there. All right, let's get out Alexa number three. Okay, this one's missing that side panel. So this one, I was actually confused about other photos. I'll have to look into this. Cause right here it says Alexa Plus. Then right here it says Alexa M. Those are two different cameras. So I'm wondering if it has an Alexa Plus. It's just this panel is for an Alexa Plus, which could be good. You know, an Alexa Plus is definitely like a higher end camera. It has all these extra ports on it versus the regular Alexa. But then everything else is an Alexa M. Either way, we'll get that out and look into that in a minute. Here we go. Alexa number four. Okay, that's missing that side panel with the um, S by S card slots and whatnot. And missing those ports. 
and missing the battery input, which isn't good. Um, missing the fan, which isn't a big deal. This one looks fairly complete as well so far. So here we go. Last but not least, this is Alexa number five. Then I'll have to check and see if there's any other spare components in there. But this is the final one. Alexa classic number five. Okay, that's missing all those buttons. It does have the DC input, which is very good because I'm definitely gonna be needing that. And yeah, this one actually looks pretty good condition. Sensors a little, has some stuff on it. Yeah, there it is. This one definitely I'd say is in one of the best conditions and overall completeness out of all of them. Let's get this out of here. Get the box off the table. Oh, here we go. It's kind of wedged in there. Okay, so that's actually another, ooh, that's good, that's another screen. Another um, side screen there and then buttons. There's no buttons in there, but screen's good because, you know, if I can at least get one working screen to be able to go through the menus and stuff, it'll be good. Yeah, it doesn't look damaged at all. The connectors are in good shape, it looks like. And I believe that's everything, but I'm just gonna get everything out and just kind of look through this box one more time. I really don't wanna miss anything. It's empty. There they all are. <laughs> Five Ari Alexas and some extra components and spare parts and whatnot. I guess the only thing to do now is just look them over, make a game plan, figure out what components they do and don't have. I guess start testing them. I have all the battery components, the S by S cards. I should have hypothetically everything I need to at least test them for power, see if they power on. But we're definitely going to make a big game plan here look through everything, figure everything out, go from there. So that's what I'll do right now. I will get back to you in just a little while here once I kind of just get everything situated um, and looked over real quick. But we really did it. Five Ari Alexas in my hands right now. Let's see if we can get one of these things fixed. So here we are, I kind of went through all the different cameras, labeled them one through five, a couple of them are on the ground right now. And after looking over all of them, I figured this one right here, which I had labeled number one, Alexa number one, looks to be in the most complete, savable condition, I guess you could say. <laughs> it looks to be the most complete. It's the only one that actually has a DC input, which kind of sucks because that's the only way I can power any of these with the power adapter I have. So, this is gonna be the first one I'm gonna test. It looks to be fairly complete. There's really not that many parts missing besides all the buttons are missing, which kind of sucks. However, I should be able to use something conductive essentially in there to press the buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, supply power to it. I'm gonna put the memory card in and I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm gonna to try to power this on. Um, again, it looks like there's nothing major missing that could cause issues with attempting to power on. However, obviously anything could happen. So let's just go ahead, supply some power to it. See what happens. See if the only one with an actual DC input powers on. If not, we can move on from there. I can try to move the DC input to the other ones to attempt to power those on. But let's just go ahead and see what happens with Alexa number one. I don't know if these power on right when power supplied or if I need to actually press the power button. But let's supply power and see what happens. Oh man, this is, this is scary. Okay, all right, I'm ready. Let's do this. Three, two, one. I don't see anything. I didn't hear anything. The screen isn't done, however, the screen could be broken, I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure the functionality of any of these, so let's go ahead and let's see, I can kinda look at these to see what the buttons are. Actually it says down in there too, on and off. This is the on and off button. So, see if my theory is correct. Let's get a conductive little screw here. V-mount's fully charged, it's fully plugged in there, that's plugged in. Let's try to power this on. Here we go. Okay, nothing. It just powered on. Okay. All right. 
the fans running. I don't know if you can see the fan on this camera. The fans running, all the lights turned on. It looks like it's powering on right now. It says waiting for a head. There's a green and red flashing light right there that you can see. I really don't know how to react right now. The first, this is the first one I tried. The first camera, the only one that actually has a DC input that I won't need to, you know, swap it around to try to figure out the rest of them. <laughs> it's powering on. And I don't hear any weird noises flashing green then red back and forth. So I'm not sure if that means anything. Okay, just. Oh my. That's the menu screen. That's the screen. Okay. There's no way. Okay, where's. Okay. Okay, it says air. There's a flashing error logo. The time code's working, it's counting up. 15.6 volt battery, and it shows an error, so I'm not sure what that means. Oh, shoot. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's a little scroll wheel that you use to go through the menus and stuff that's not on this one. So I can't go through any menus, I don't think. There's no directional arrows. Okay, so first things first, I definitely need these buttons. Okay, there we go. I need these buttons because this probably is not the best idea. Okay, that's what I need, that's what I need, okay. All right, software error reboot. That's probably not a good thing. System error, high sensor temperature. Ooh, I don't know about that either. That might not be a good thing. Main battery, low power. Uh, I don't know about that. It should be charged and it should accept, I believe anywhere from like 10 to 30 volts or something. And this is 14.8 volts. Card one, invalid card type, low sensor temperature. So it says high sensor temperature and low sensor temperature. So. There could just be a malfunction with the sensor temperature or potentially a malfunction on the sensor, which would not be good at all. But this card is too slow and invalid card type. I believe I have the right SPIS cards, but there is different types of SPIS cards. So I'm gonna have to look into that. And then there is this little scroll thing. So there's more, there's more errors or more like uh, info on there. I just can't get to it from that scroll wheel. So I think what I need to do is swap the side panel from one of the cameras like this one with all the buttons on it over to this camera so I can go through the menu and try to figure stuff out. I also see these say E, 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 and then W, W, W. I'm not sure what E and W stand for or if those are like different types of errors or something, but I cannot believe the first camera actually powered on and it actually like it functions. I've been pressing buttons. Okay, so software error, system error. So I wonder, I'll have to look into firmware if I could update the firmware if that could do anything, if I just need to reinstall firmware on this camera, because there is an SD card slot on the bottom here. Okay, so I think next thing I'm going to pull off the side panel, pull off the best looking side panel from one of the other cameras and swap them out. Go from there so I can actually scroll through the menus, look at all the different stuff. It looks like I can go to different info, but I'm just gonna swap the side panels out, see what I can do there and really go from there. But this is absolutely insane. I was really hoping for this, but I absolutely, I did not expect the first one just to power right up like this, like with no issues. Probably this one, this looks like it's the most intact in terms of all the buttons are on there. They all seem to click. And then the scroll wheel's on there as well. So I'm gonna swap this side panel onto there, swap these around, power back on and see what I can go, see where I can go from there. Let's do this. See if the dial works now. Oh my, yeah, let's go, okay. I don't think there's anything I can really do until I can get the memory card figured out and get those errors figured out. I'm gonna try to see if I can install a different firmware, a new firmware, see what that does, if anything. Maybe format the card on the computer or something like that, and then we'll go from there. But I'm, I just can't believe it's working. That's actually powered on. So that is honestly fantastic news, but. I'll get back to you after I look into more, some more stuff, do some research, install a new firmware, stuff like that, and I'll get back to you. I just wanna do a quick rundown of everything I have here, what the cameras are, um, it just everything that's included with this package. First things first, right down the middle here, we have three Ari Alexa Classic. So these are all the exact same model. Um, obviously, some are missing more parts than others, but three Ari Alexa Classics right here, and then two, 
Ari Alexa M's, which, as far as I know, are very, very similar component-wise to the Alexa Classics, like almost identical. However, the M stands for modular, I believe, and they made these kind of as like um, a way to fit the camera in a tighter location. So the Ari Alexa M's actually don't have sensors, any sort of sensors built into them. That's a separate module that you attach with a cable. So the little sensor block itself can go anywhere really small um, than all the brains they use right here. So these two are Alexa M's. They don't have sensors. There's no way for me to actually like use these, record video with them or anything. However, since they're almost identical internally to these, I should still be able to use some of these spare parts if I need them for these. So these are really good just full parts units. So the three classics are pretty like well put together. They all have sensors and everything. So yeah, these are gonna be our best chances to get a working camera. And then these two will be kind of for parts for these. Then right here, this is actually um, the back part of this Alexa M that goes on there to kind of make it, you know, equally as size as this one. Then we have some spare parts here, a fan cover, a side panel, I believe for this one. Yeah, so the side panel for um, that Alexa M plus, whatever it is, um, some screws and stuff, a uh, ribbon cable, which I don't know what this is for, but nice RE ribbon cable. And that's everything that was included with this package for $1,250. Definitely a lot of stuff. Hopefully enough stuff to at least get one of these running. If not, maybe all three of them. Uh, definitely stay tuned, but we'll see what we can do to try to get as many of these three as we can working. But then this stuff over here is all the stuff I had to buy in order to even like take on this project. So, you know, of course an S by S card, which is actually in one of these right now. SBIS card reader, SDI to HDMI converter, because these are only SDI output and I don't have an SDI monitor, so I had to get a converter. Of course, none of these have lens mounts either, which really sucks. So, C7 adapters was actually nice enough to provide with an EF mount for these cameras, so that if I do get one of them working, I can mount this to it and actually be able to mount a lens because all of these have just partial lens mounts that you can't actually mount a lens to. So thank you C7 adapters, seriously. I could not have done this without your help. There's no battery plates on any of these either. So there's no way to mount a battery. So I got a V-mount battery. And then this right here, this cable, literally just a simple cable. This costed $100 just for this cable. So absolutely ridiculous. Um, I did not know when taking this project on just the huge amount of expenses and parts I would need in order to even come close to testing these. So again, if you could go down and hit the like button and subscribe, that would really help me out. So that's it for the rundown of everything I got in this package. Let's see if we can get any of these going. All right, real quick, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So if you didn't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone that wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. So some of the benefits of Skillshare are of course that it's an ad-free platform. So you can watch all the classes you want without being interrupted by annoying advertisements and breaking your focus. There's also new premium classes added weekly. So there's pretty much always gonna be something new to discover on a weekly basis. And then the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So I actually signed up for Skillshare over a year ago when Marquez Brownlee first released his Skillshare course called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. So if you don't know, Marquez is essentially the biggest tech creator on the YouTube platform. And he's someone that I really look up to and I've been watching him for years. So I decided to join Skillshare because of his course. But then after I finished Marquez's awesome course, I pretty much got sucked into the platform and binge watched a bunch of different courses about filmmaking, creativity, and productivity. And the classes on Skillshare have seriously helped me create better YouTube content for you. So the first 1,000 people to use my link down in the description will get to try Skillshare for one month free so that you can decide if this is something that will help you build new skills like it did for me without having to pay anything out of pocket for the first month. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the video. Wow. So I've been working on Alexa number one, the first one that I got going, the only one that actually has a power input. Like you saw, it powered on. I was able to scroll through the menu and everything after swapping out the side panel. And it had a list of errors and stuff, so I couldn't like record a video or you know get really any further with that. So I tried updating the firmware uh, to the newest firmware available to see if that would fix anything. Um, it got 
almost all the way through and had an error with one part of the firmware and couldn't complete updating. I don't know why, but it couldn't fully update the firmware for the camera. So now there's another error on the camera that says, you know, um, I forgot what part, it's like just a certain section of the firmware that it couldn't update. That's a new error on the camera. I don't exactly know where to go from here with this camera. Um, so at least I know I have photos of, you know, the firmware of all the list of errors on it and everything like that. I kind of know where I'm at with Alexa number one right now. Um, it powers on, which is absolutely amazing. You know, I can go through the menu. It seems to at least somewhat function right now. So what I'm going to do is actually move on. I'm going to let this one go right where it's at. I, you know, like I said, I kind of know the rundown of it. I'm going to try to pull this 12 volt input out of this to use with the other cameras and go through the rest of the four cameras, test them for power, see if they power on, see, you know, what those are like, if those perform better than this one, um, what kind of errors they have, run through and just kind of get a rundown of everything wrong with all the cameras. And, you know, with any luck, one of the other ones won't even have any errors. It'll just be totally working, which is what I'm really hoping for. Obviously, I'm not expecting it, but I'm really hoping for that. So we're definitely going to find out. I just need to figure out how to remove this 12 volt input if I can and you know just move on to those other ones i don't want this video to be like you know an hour and a half crazy long video so i'm gonna have to split this video into two parts i know that's not what you like to hear but we really got a good amount of progress on this first camera you know knowing at least that it's fully functional um you know that i can go through the settings and all that stuff definitely a lot farther than i expected to get um you know on the first camera i tried so i'm gonna split this video up into two parts the next part, I'm gonna just go through all the rest of the cameras, do full testing, hopefully get, you know, at least one of them, if not, maybe all three of the Alexa Classics functioning, up and running, maybe recording footage. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe for part two because that's where I'm gonna really try my hardest to get these working. I just have a lot more testing, a lot more stuff to go through um, that, like I said, I'm gonna put in the second part because I just don't want this to be a ridiculously long video. So yeah, two more things. If you know anyone or if you have any experience working on Ari cameras or with Ari cameras in general, specifically Ari Alexa Classics, or if you know anyone that there's a chance they know anything about these and fixing them, repairing them, anything like that, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, my email should be in like my about section of my YouTube channel. I could really use any help I could get. And the chances are if you're watching this, I'm still um, actively working on this project. I'm not sure when the second part's gonna come out because I'm gonna work as hard as I can to get these things fixed and going for you for part two. Also, one last thing. I wanna thank everyone that has helped me with this video and helped me put this together and get this project going. I seriously, seriously could not have done this without everyone's support. So thank you to Monkey Deals for supplying these cameras, being super helpful in the process. Huge thank you to C7 Adapters for actually supplying me with an EF mount to use with these cameras if I get them going. I'm gonna go a lot more into this and you know, um, install this adapter in part two, you know, once I get them going, which I will hopefully get them going. Um, so seriously, huge thank you to C7 Adapters and Huge thank you to everyone else behind the scenes that's helped with this. You know who you are. I seriously could not have done this without everybody's help. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to watching this. Like I said, please stay tuned for part two. I'm gonna work my hardest to get at least one of these cameras functional. So drop a like on this video, subscribe, stay tuned for part two, and I'll see you in the next one.